what's up, everybody? It's your captain, MJD, here. Our first No Disrespect of 2016 season. The show where I throw shade like Menelik Watson throws haymakers at benches. If you're wondering where I am, I am too. My ship crash landed here, and the sign says Rebus Island. But I thought this place was supposed to be tough terrain, not a relaxing resort. Weird. Dalton with the long strike, and Green beats Rebus for the score. Anyway, let's just get to it. One of my favorite performances of the week came from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Jameis Winston was throwing darts all over the field against Atlanta. Steps up and throws deep, looking for Evans, and he's got it for a touchdown! No disrespect, but did the Falcons think this was a game of two-hand touch? Maybe flag football? Here's Winston, throwing short to Charles Sims out of the backfield. Nice move by Sims, spinning, he goes in! Touchdown! Charles Sims made you look silly. Two of you got juked so hard, it looked like you fell out of your cleats. Then three, yes, three of you ate a dirt dinner trying to catch him as he spun into the end zone. Delicious. Mm -mm -mm. As some of you may know, I am the radio voice of the Los Angeles Rams. Thank you, thank you. Please hold your applause. Yes, the Rams got beat up on Monday night, but I'm not going to overreact like the rest of the media. It was week one, and the Niners showed up. Simple as that. 49er touchdown! Into the end zone! And it's a touchdown to Vance McDonald! And this is a blowout. No disrespect. But it's hard to win when the Niners have an extra player on offense. Shout out to Kevin Harlan for this amazing radio call. Hey, somebody has run out on the field. He's running down the middle by the 50. He's at the 30. He's bare-chested and banging his chest. Now he runs the opposite way. Somebody stop Look that out. man. Here comes the blue coat, Kevin. Oh, they got him. Here comes coming the blue from coat. The left. Oh, and they tackle him at the 40-yard line. And finally, the most disrespectful play of the week. Going for two. Car for Crabtree. He has it. He held on to it. Del Rio's gamble comes off. You know I had to go to Raider Nation for this one. But it wasn't the fact that Del Rio went for two. It was the way he went for it on Twitter after the game. Do me a favor, though, Coach. Throw a no disrespect in there next time. Well, that's all for this week's show. Best commenter on YouTube gets a shout-out on next week's show. Or throw us a line at NFL Now using the hashtag NFL No Disrespect. I say I need to find a way off this island. But the Bills play the Jets on Thursday, and I think I see Sammy Watkins boogie boarding over there. Maybe he can help me out. Hey, yo, Sammy, holla at your boy, man. Hi, I'm MJD, living and loving the retired life, as you can see. Football's underway, and all is good in the NFL. So many good players, so many good plays. But speaking of plays, here's my take on week two. No disrespect, but did you see Jamal Charles play? How are you going to fumble when you're trying to run the clock out? And how about those Eagles offensive plays? No disrespect, but those Eagles are looking more like dead birds. Ugh. And speaking of Eagles, Chip Kelly has been praised for his unique style of coaching, and he prefers up-tempo system with a grueling practice to help players stay in shape. No disrespect, but Chip Kelly, your style is whack, and you're out of shape. How's your top running back only have 11 yards through two weeks? Eli Manning has more rushing yards than DeMarco Murray. And don't get me started on Sam Bradford. I had him on my fantasy team and had to drop his butt today. No disrespect, though, Sam. I know you're going to turn it around. Meanwhile, the Cowboys fans are feeling excited after beating Chip and the Eagles. America's team is currently 2-0 and sitting on top of the NFC East. No disrespect, but they might not win another game this season. No Romo, no Dez? No chance. Simple as that. See you guys in Cabo. Perhaps following the lead of Cam Chancellor and asking for more money, Ragnar, the Vikings mascot, recently demanded a huge raise. The mascot wants $20,000 a game for the next 10 years, which amounts to $1.6 million. The Vikings shockingly said no. No disrespect, but are those horns filled with drugs? He wants 200 k a year? Come on now. That's more than the long snapper. He should be happy with free tickets. Mascots. Trip. Well, that's my humble opinion on the NFL. Hopefully you like what I had to say. And no disrespect, but if you don't, you need your head checked. That's it from me. I'm starting to get a little sleepy now. Ah, back to retired life I go. So hard. Hey! What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Dr. Maurice Jones-Drew, MD, PhD, MJD. And this No Disrespect Week 2, the Injury Edition. Now, I'm hoping all your injured players get better, obviously. I'm not here to throw shade on any of them. But to the rest of the league, you better watch out. 
I'm coming for you like Matt Stafford comes for hapless cornerbacks. Stafford knocking over the Bengals. Let's get to it. I was happy to see the Cardinals looking like the Cardinals again in their win over the Bucks. Carson Palmer had the offense humming, and the Honey Badger, he was flying all over the field, literally. Gets drilled by Tyron Matthew. Boy, what a hit Mike Evans took. No disrespect, but the only big hits the Bucks made were on the camera crew. And Evans with a touchdown reception. Damn! I bet the camera guys regret getting those floor seats. And I only say floor because the way he hit the floor. He definitely got pancakes for breakfast. Watch those cars, buddy. Doctor's order. Big props to the Browns for coming out and swinging on Sunday. Young pup Corey Coleman was making big time plays, and Isaiah Crowell had the run of the week. This team has a bright future. Crowell breaks free. Touchdown, Cleveland Browns, 85 yards. No disrespect, but when I say bright future, I mean bright distant future. Seriously, another block kick for a touchdown? Why do I feel like I've seen this before? Oh, I know, because I have. With the same two teams. You're Cleveland, not Hollywood. No one wants to see that kind of sequel. Hold on. I think I might be detecting something. Yep. Yep, it does. It sounds like the Browns season is officially dead. And finally, the most disrespectful play of the week came from Monday Night Football. Another play fake. Cutler lost the football. And the Eagles have it. Ball security continues to be a problem. No, I'm not talking about the way the Eagles took Jay Cutler's lunch in primetime. I'm talking about this. For the land of the free. No, it's not what you're thinking. I stand with my Eagles. But what about this guy holding the flag? You tweeting, bro? You swiping Tinder? You sitting Jay Cutler on your fantasy team? And why are you wearing a Cavs shirt at a Bears home game? These are the tough questions we need to ask ourselves, America. That, and how much does Cam Newton's hat wrangler get paid? Seriously, I want to know. That's all for this week. A special shout out to YouTube user, Legitness Awaits. You are definitely in the MJD squad, or what I like to call the MJDs. And I'm looking forward to the comments next week. All right, I got to go get my Dr. James Andrews on and get to this long patient list. I see Vikings, Patriots, Browns, Chargers, Bucks, Lions, Seahawks, Dolphins, Bears. It's going to be a long day. Can't you see us right there? See that? That's when you know you're certified. Hey! What's up, everybody? It's not what you're thinking. I didn't get cast as the new lead in Hamilton. No, this is the no disrespect. Brady is back edition! Woo! Can't wait to put it in my fancy lineup. So I figured I would head to New England rocking this new age. Check me out. Minute Man in honor of those bored old white dudes I saw on the sideline this past weekend in Foxborough. Don't worry, you won't get shut out again this season. Because I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but take it away, Patriots guy. Brady's back! That's your quarterback! How about the Vikings? 4-0 without AP and Teddy? It's hard not to be pulling for the fans in Minnesota. They've endured enough heartbreak through the years. So it's good to see them win again in primetime against the Giants. No disrespect, but I gotta come at you, OBJ. I love your passion. And you're one of the most exciting players in the game. And I'll even defend you when you get a penalty or two like you did on Monday night. But not when you're outplayed by a ball boy. Vernon in pursuit of Bradford and Sam threw it away. Damn! He's not a ball boy. He can just ball boy. Look at him. He's not even phased. Somebody get this guy on a roster quick. It's been a strange start to the season. The Panthers, who played in the Super Bowl just eight months ago, are one in three. Sure, there have been some bright spots, like this amazing ball boy-like one-handed TD grab, but I never thought I would see a Panthers defense letting a guy do this to him. Seriously, never. He just went over 300 yards receiving. 12 catches, three bills large. No disrespect, Panthers, but you did this to yourself. You let Josh Norman, your top corner, go this offseason, and then Julio took the top off on you at home. When asked for a comment about the game, Josh Norman simply said, I'm just going to sip my tea on that one. Sounds like a good idea, Josh. And finally, on to the Cleveland Browns. Despite losing two QBs and the rookie wide out to injury, this team is playing tough week in and week out. Unfortunately, they lost another tough one to the Redskins this past weekend. No disrespect, but this game got fumbled away late. Second down and two, Kessler to Johnson. Walking there. Foster slowed him down. There's a loose ball. It's a fumble. And the Redskins have recovered. The Redskins have it, huh? Then why is Duke Johnson actually holding the ball above his head, ref? Why are you looking at the pile? 
The call is not overturned, and the Skins hold on for the win. Now, the Browns are 0-4, about to be 0-5 because they play the Patriots this weekend. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but... Brady's back! That's your quarterback! And now, for the most disrespectful play of week four, courtesy of the Oakland Raiders. Nope, not Crabtree's game-tying touchdown and the subsequent annihilation of this guy in a neon vest hanging too close to the end zone. No, I would like to introduce you to Marquette King, who I like to call Strong Punter. Something almost as rare as a black minute man, a punter with swag. Why is that disrespectful, you ask? Hmm. Well, I'll give you the answer. Because Marquette King is doing the Ray Lewis dance in the house that Ray Lewis built. Tread lightly, Marquette. Remember, I'm not in Oakland to protect you anymore. That's all for this week's disrespect. A big shout out to YouTube users, Prince Ali and Kid Clutch. I would love to run for president, but I actually pay taxes. All right, then. I'm going to go dump some of this Josh Norman tea in the harbor. See you guys later. Hello, America. It's your boy, MJD, coming to you from the Oval Office. I'm so grateful that many of you had me as your write-in candidate. Thanks again for the letter of endorsement, Coach Belichick. I'm now the most powerful man in the free world. That's right, Roger. I am. The election is over, but the country remains divided. Fortunately, there's still one thing that unites us all. Football. So it's time now, with no disrespect, presidential address. Tuesday was election night, but Monday was football night as the Bills took on the Seahawks. Makes an incredible one-handed catch. What a game by Jimmy Graham. Had two ridiculous one-hand grabs, Robert Woods showed off some toe drag swag, and Rex Ryan and Sherman went at it like Trump and Clinton. Watch Richard Sherman look up Rex Ryan right after the interception. Or like Trump and pretty much everyone else. The game was intense from start to finish, causing Pete Carroll's hair to turn from white to whiter. No disrespect, but this kick attempt needs a recount. Some might call it rigged. Right before the half, the Bills tried to kick a field goal, and all hell breaks loose. Oh, boy, are they offside. Well, first attempt was blocked by Richard Sherman, but Sherman was offsides and probably should have been called for roughing the kicker. Carpenter down grabbing his knee as Richard Sherman hit him. You can see that Dan Carpenter is roughed up because he's rolling around the ground like my two English Massives, Jag and Raider. But it turns out he's not really hurt. He's just acting hurt like a professional soccer player. Trainers came onto the field to attend kicker number two. This will be a charged fourth timeout for Buffalo. Number two will have to leave the game. My goodness. Now Carpenter has to sit out of play, but Rex Ryan, he's no fool. He plays it smart, spikes the ball, and on the next play, Carpenter gets a chance to kick it. Wild first half, and fittingly, oh. it is good. Except it ain't. The Bills are called for a suspicious delay of game. Carpenter resets. Third time's a charm, right? And a knuckle ball that is no good. Wow. That was longer and more painful than the election. Let's refresh with some footage from this dope squirrel at the Packers game. Well, let's analyze it. That's good form. Springing. Yeah, I like that. Damn, that squirrel has moves just like a young MJD. Too bad the Packers can't sign this guy. No disrespect, but I was serious. What's wrong with the Packers? Miss field goal? Drop passes? Wide receivers playing running back? We're going to see Ty Montgomery in this backfield for the rest of the year. They've drained their talent pool, people. Even their leader knows the system's broken. Get the crowd involved more than just the, uh, uh, the squirrel on the field, and, and that would have been a better situation for us. Don't worry, A.A. Ron. It's okay. Your squirrel's a star running back. We just need to figure out if we should call him Todd Squirrely or DeMarco Furry. America, please weigh in. Every vote matters. Make sure you register legally. No acorns for the squirrel. And finally, the most disrespectful play of the week. Matthews got it back, sets, looks, throws. He's got Golden Tate who makes the catch inside the 15, inside the 10, and he's biking away. He's into the end zone. Pack the bags, start the plane. This game is over. That was unreal. I've never seen in my life someone score a game winner and drop kick his opponent at the same time. He went straight, Crouch and Tiger hitting Golden on that defender. Can't get much more disrespectful than that. But no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about this. After his win over the Jaguars, Charkandrick West tweeted, Laugh out loud. No disrespect, but I really lose zero sleep over you guys' fantasy teams. Our team did a great job at finding a way to win. Chiefs Kingdom. OMG. It's so beautiful. It brings a tear to my eye. 
I don't even care he plays so fast and loose with his spelling and grammar. He said no disrespect. He watches. He no disrespected like a presidential boss. That's all for this week's show. I got an Oklahoma drill scheduled with Putin. God bless America. Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy MJD, referee here. The Rams were on a bye week, and I'm their color announcer, so I had the week off. So I decided to spend my Sunday refereeing the Raiders Buccaneers game, and what a game! Derek Carr had 523 yards passing. Four touchdowns, and the announcer had the call of the year on the game winner in overtime. Card throws, catch Seth Roberts, breaks the tackle, he's gone! Ten, five, touchdown! Raiders! No disrespect, but my arm is sore for a reason. The Raiders set an NFL record with 23 penalties. That's 23 times I had to throw my flag. When you cut all these penalties together, it's almost as long as that touchdown call. You've heard of all 22? This is all 23. Called for the penalty. That's a hold. Holding. Official grounding. Holding. Flag comes in. Pushed him right off. This board is just hands in the face. He has to report not having a foul in this game. Roughness. Hands in the face. And has one man downfield on the kick. Oh, flag comes in. Other than the 12th guy. Pass in the fair. 12 men for me. Just false start. It's like punching somebody. False start. Holding. Then you see the hold on the left side right there. Illegal formation. With their 22nd penalty of the game. And now a flag comes in from the secondary. Yeah, he pushed them in the back. The Raiders have earned that record. Get it together, Raiders. I'm not in ref game shape, but I'll have my Ed Hockley muscles soon enough. How about that game in London? I know a lot of you like to complain about another game ending in a tie, but it was exciting. Unfortunately, a kicker didn't take care of business again. Justin Hopkins from 34. This kick is no good. Wide to the left. No disrespect, Josh Norman, but if you're going to defend your kicker, you should at least get his name right. If anybody want to go at Tress uh, for missing those field goal, I think you suck. Josh, I know you're frustrated for missing this interception, but keep your helmet on. But could not hang on, and the Bengals will punch it away. And the refs had nothing to do with this mistake. Getting called for five penalties have been excessive, but don't take your frustration out on the refs. I just got to know, who's official 88? He sucked. Man, that was brutal. I can tell Josh Norman's been watching this segment because that was a whole lot of disrespect. I promise, it gets better, 88. And now the most disrespectful play of the week comes from Monday Night Football. Howard, the running back again, out of Indiana after a couple of years at UAB, and he is into the secondary. This was 69 of Jordan Howard's 203 combined yards. The rookie, he beasted on what was supposed to be the best defense in football. Keep grinding, young pup. Keep grinding. But nope, I was talking about this. Yup, that's Jay Cutler's wife, Kristen Cavallari, telling all her husband's haters to shut up. Jay still got it. Check out this throw. Cutler stumbled a bit, and the ball hits Alshon Jeffrey in the back of the head. You got to admit, that throw was on point, though. Kristen, you may be a star from the OC, but you're a real OG when it comes to throwing shade. But please throw a no disrespect on there for me next time. That's all for this week's show. And remember, it's tough out there for reps. So if you see one, give them a hug. No touching the merchandise, though. Ready? That was a horrible whistle. What's wrong with this whistle now? Oh, no. Hey! hey. Howdy, y'all. It's your boy, MJD, coming live from Brett Favre's Ranch. He ain't here right now, but he's letting me take care of his animals, as you can see. Herding cattle is not easy at all, but watching football on Sunday is. And I'm telling you, I was watching the Legion of Boom from this weekend against the Bengals, and Earl Thomas, what a pick! I mean, you nearly returned it for a touchdown. But no disrespect, Michael Bennett, what the hell are you doing? I mean, why are you jumping on the quarterback? He didn't do anything. He, he gave you a gift. Unbelievable. All that nonsense, and you woke up the Jolly Red Giant. Now the Bengals are 5-0, and and you guys are 2-3. and I bet Earl Thomas wished you never touched him. I bet you he's one upset Longhorn, huh? Speaking of Longhorns, Bear Favre, don't worry. Yours are safe here on the ranch. A couple of backup quarterbacks played well on Sunday. Brian Hoyer and Kirk Cousins pushed their team on their back to get in a winning position. Unbelievable. No disrespect, but... They are who we thought they were. And you put them in the game.
you guys got to protect the ball much better than you've been doing. He unloads it down the field, and it's intercepted. Robert Alford! It's going to be a victory for the Falcons! Unbelievable. Not all best retire and travel the world like your boy. Some stick around, keep trying to play football. Unbelievable. Like 39-year-old Charles Woodson, who had two interceptions against 39-year-old Peyton Manning. But Peyton Manning won the game. And after the game, he said, it took Charles 18 years. It probably offsets the two TDs I threw on him last year. Call it a wash. No disrespect, Peyton Manning, but now you're picking me off. Disrespecting is my thing. So at least if you're going to do it, give me a shout out. And next time, if you're going to throw some shade, say no disrespect. Damn, I'm working hard at this. That's all for this week's show. Leave me a comment on YouTube or use the hashtag NFL No Disrespect on Twitter and let me know where you want to travel next. Please. No disrespect, but you guys need to step up your social media game. I need some better suggestions. Brett Favre's ranch? God, I mean, what do I look like? This is, this is, this is unbelievable. Home, home on the range where the deer and the antelope play. Bonjour, football fans. It's Monsieur MJD, live from Petty. Retired life is tough. Relaxing, eating croissants, and watching football ain't easy. <sighs> Back in the States, there's so much to see, so much to get excited about. Like the Chiefs, who finally threw a touchdown to a wide receiver when Alex Smith and Jeremy Macklin connected in the third quarter on Monday Night Football. Boy, John, it's over. It's all over. No disrespect, Mike Tirico and John Groom, but what are we celebrating here? The Chiefs scored on a seven-yard angle route when they were getting blown out in prime time. Sure, Macklin has the speed to burn, but it might be another 659 days until a Chiefs receiver catches another one. Alex Smith, even the term dink and dunk is disrespected by what you're doing. How about the NFC East? With the Cowboys' injuries and the Eagles off to a slow start, this division really looks like it's up for grabs. I think it's going to whichever coach does the best job. No disrespect, but it ain't Jay Gruden. Jay, what are you doing starting Kirk Cousins? This guy has 23 interceptions through 17 career games. That's as many as Jamarcus Russell had in 31 career games, and we know where he is. Don't you have a third-string quarterback that also plays scout team safety? He has a 90.6 career pass rating, but hey, what do I know? I'm only a nine-year vet and France's greatest import. Damn, this tea is good. As you all know, I love running backs, and there's a really good one in San Francisco, but it's not Carlos Hyde. No disrespect, but I'm talking about Colin Kaepernick, the highest paid running back in the league. He had seven carries for 46 yards and a touchdown this past weekend, but there's one problem, Cap. You're a quarterback, so let's look at your quarterback stats. Last week, you had four interceptions, two pick sixes, and were 9 of 19 passing. That's an interception of more than 20% of your throws. Trent Baalke. If you're interested in a running back that can throw, I think I know a guy. For the Jaguars, Maurice, he's going to get the first. Oh, you throw it. Mercedes catches it. Touchdown. That was pretty nice. Split at the numbers. David's got Maurice behind him. Toss sweep to Maurice. And Maurice is going to throw. And he's got a man, and it's intercepted. Who played that? Damn, someone's trying to ruin my vacation. You know I've been hating a little, just a little bit, but I do want to end on a positive note. There is one player in Arizona that I absolutely love. Respect, Cortez. Keep being you. Well, that's all for this week's show. Where will I be next week? The Pyramids of Egypt? The Pyramids of Vegas? Antonio Brown's barber? No disrespect, but that barber should be cut. Keep watching NFL now to find out. Garcon, more tea, s'il vous plaît. Welcome back to Cooking with MJD. Here's your host with the roast, Maurice Jones. Drew. Hey, everybody. So glad you could join me. It's my favorite time of the year. No disrespect to Hanukkah, but I love Thanksgiving. What can I say? I like stuffing myself, right? We've got a lot of cooking and disrespecting to do, so let's get right to it. First up, we're cooking some skin stuffing, a dish Kirk Cousins gave a resounding. Ooh. This year's special ingredient, a sprinkle, a little sprinkle of shredded cheese. Garcon, fromage, s'il vous plaît. Well, they lost to Green Bay in the playoffs. You're gonna be careful. <laughs> Merci, Pierre. This stuffing, it's delicious. I really am an amazing chef. 
The Skins took it to the Packers on Sunday. Kirk Cousins threw for three touchdowns, and rookie Robert Kelly, a.k.a. R. Kelly, a.k.a. Fat Kelly, showed there ain't nothing wrong with a little bump and grind. He made the Packers look foolish. Seriously. Check out linebacker Kyler Fackle as he hustles onto the field late just to eat a bunch of dirt as Rob scored one of his three touchdowns. Down the field now. And Kelly's going to get the payoff with another rushing touchdown. No disrespect, <laughs> but wasn't annihilating the Packers defense enough? Kurt, why'd you have to try and annihilate your GM too, bro? Oh, you like it now? <laughs> I'm sure during the game his answer was a lot, but in that moment, the answer was probably no. No grown man likes his head touched like that ever. I know you're fired up for the win, but that man cuts the checks, so you better work on those post-game celebrations, and you definitely need to work on your post-game touchdown celebrations too. That's a low, 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 low blow, Kurt. Who works to the left and gets in for the touchdown. Next up, we have the most surprising dessert of the season, a little dish I like to call Pie Del Rio. It's a winter weather is hot or cold, so it travels well, like all the way to Mexico City, where the Raiders took on the Texans on Monday night. The atmosphere in the stadium was hype, even if the fans were a little too laser focused on distracting Brock Osweiler. Uh, there was a couple times it, it definitely hit me in the eye, um, and it was it was very noticeable. Speaking of laser focus, man, I'm laser focused on this pie. Mm -mm -mm. Jack Del Rio, you are doing too much. Delicious. It took Derek Carr and the Raiders until the fourth quarter to heat up, but they came away with their eighth win of the season, eight and two. Silver and black, baby. <laughs> no disrespect, but can we all agree the white cleats should be banned? DeAndre Hopkins, he's out of bounds. Did he step out of bounds? Looks like it might be mm -hmm. challengeable if I'm the Texans. The line is white, the cleat is white. Of course it's tough to call whether players in or out. Didn't we just deal with this just a few weeks ago for the Broncos and Saints? Oh, let's see if Park steps out. It was close. I didn't see him, though. I not from that look. I'd rather see every player in Kendall's gold striped furry tail cleats. Obviously, we'd be able to tell if they're in or out, one. And two, it'd just be entertaining to see everybody run around those, you know, those squirrel furs. I don't, I don't know. It's crazy. And finally, the most thankful play of the week comes from Minnesota. Palmer sits in. Pass picked off. Intercepted by Rhodes. Xavier Rhodes down the sideline. And good by touchdown. Vikings, no flag. Man, that was right before half. That pick six probably killed the Cardinals' playoff hopes. But not that. This right before the game even started. Oh, no! Oh. Oh, no way. Is he okay? Damn! The most disrespectful part? He didn't even stop to help the guy. Unbelievable. Well, that's all for this week's show. Let's all be thankful for football at the holidays. It's a perfect distraction for those uncomfortable dinner conversations. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I, I, I think I overcooked this one. Mm. Mm. It's overcooked. Mm. It overcooked. I overcooked it. Hello, everyone. Happy holidays. It's the happiest time of the year. No disrespect. There's no time to waste because I got to go wait in a 10-hour line at the mall so my kids can continue to be spoiled little brats. So let's start with Monday Night Football. Ken Newton showed up big on Monday night. No, literally, when he showed up at the stadium wearing this big pink hat. Look at this thing. It makes my hat look silly. That pink hat was so grown that it had a mustache. But Cam showed up for the game, too. 300 yards, two touchdowns. And although it would take more than a Christmas miracle for the Panthers to make the playoffs, they won big. Touchdown, Panthers. Oh, oh, oh. No disrespect, Redskins. But you got stuffed. Big game? Playoffs on the line? And this Jonathan Stewart stiff arm pretty much summed up the entire night. And now a stiff arm and another first down, flag thrown. That's an unbelievable run by Jonathan Stewart on an inside zone. He cuts it all the way back. But just because you got truck doesn't mean you should truck your cheerleaders too. Cousins running for the first down. He shoved out of bounds. Look, because you see where he finally shoved him down. He was almost completely out of the white area. But, ooh, she's okay. We're happy to report. Man, that was brutal. Well... I mean, not so brutal that I don't want to run it back in slow-mo while saying... Because Christmas is a time of giving, I'm going to give my good friend Ike Taylor the greatest gift of all, a chance to do a segment. Ike? Thanks, MJD. You're Ike, the best. Thank you, Ike. How about my Pittsburgh Steelers? After starting four and five, you know what they've done? What? They've won five in a row. They smacked the Bengals in the mop on Sunday. Now they get a chance to clinch the division. 
crown against the Ravens on Christmas Day. Eli Rogers puts the Steelers in front. Oh, oh, oh. No disrespect, Jeremy Hill. But you don't mess with the terrible tower. Y'all are up 17 to 3, but you got cursed. You lost the game. He doesn't like the terrible towel, but he likes to score. Come on, Jeremy. You're a Louisiana boy, just like me. I don't want to have to yell at you like this. It's the holiday season. And now it's time for the most disrespectful play of the week. And look at this. Osweiler is benched. Tom Savage is coming into the game. And the fans here in Houston go nuts. Wow. That is a statement right there. That wasn't disrespectful. That was savage. Very savage. Tom Savage. Those fans were hyped to see their $72 million man get sent to the bench. But I wasn't talking about that, Ike. I was talking about this. He said, I'm healthy. He said, I've got my second win. There's RG3. He's running about by Jerry Hughes. And boy, oh boy, somebody on the sidelines just took a lick it into the, the warmer. You think a job on the sidelines is easy? It's dangerous. Quarterbacks running to people on the sideline is truly a gift that keeps on giving. So, one more time, please. Hey! Oh. All right, MJD. I think we need to get going. You're right, Ike. Happy holidays, everybody. Oh, not this again. Oh, what's up, guys? How you doing? No disrespect has gone interplanetary this time. In honor of my Raiders, my dogs, I'm here in outer space looking for the real black hole. I heard these things can mess with the space-time continuum, so this could get weird. But it can't be much weirder than what goes on in the Oakland Coliseum. Plus, if Derek Carr can rally from a broken pinky, I can do this. Oh, yeah, it's definitely dislocated. But forget Derek Carr. Khalil Mack stole the show against the Panthers on Sunday. He had a nasty pick six right before half to open up a big lead. Khalil Mack, what an athletic play. And then a strip sack to seal the deal at the end of the game. The trouble, and the Raiders end it. It was Mack with the strip sack. Plus, he even made some new friends in the stands. What a guy. No disrespect, but the black hole isn't always friendly. Cam was just trying to give the ball to a little kid, and I respect that, Cam, because you're doing the right thing. And I love the way the kid's holding the ball. Remember, protect that Tata! Because everybody's hopes and dreams are counting on you. And if you fumble that rock, a black hole member's going to enjoy it. That a boy, kid. Eyes on the prize. Whoa, what the devil? Who the hell are you? It's me. Alter reality, MJD. Call me MJD2. You said earlier things are gonna get weird. I sure did. Can I handle this next one? Yeah, go ahead, why not? How about the Packers? You can never count them out. On Monday night, they stepped up on the road against the Eagles. Their Phillies leader had another two touchdowns and helped the pack snap a four game skid. To the end zone and a catch made in traffic. You can't throw the ball any better than that. No disrespect, but maybe we shouldn't be investigating black holes and we should be investigating the mysterious black tent. What were you doing in there, Aaron? Getting calls from Brett Favre? Advice from Olivia Munn? Enjoying a very tiny circus? AJ Hawk tweeted out that the tent is used for bathroom breaks and privacy when you need trainers to wrap and check on injuries. But he's a former Packer, so he can't be trusted. This conspiracy goes deep. And finally, the most disrespectful play of the week comes from the greatest quarterback on the planet. With Brady is a blocker and gets the first down. Tom is the slowest, least aggressive lead blocker I've ever seen. He avoids everybody. They got the first down. Why didn't someone on the Jets just put him on the ground? Pummel him, why don't you? No disrespect, but that's too much respect. Let's get another play. A third and three. Willie Sneed, can he throw it? Wide open! And caught by Hightower. And he will roll into the end zone. Touchdown, Saints! Damn, that's so disrespectful. The Saints busted out a trick play up 21 in the fourth quarter. Talk about running it up, but I think we can do even better than that. And Tyreek Hill will get room to run. And look out for Hill in the open field. He's got an angle. Hill's going to take this all the way. Defense, special teams, Kansas City with a big stretch to take the lead. Double damn! Not only did Tyreek Hill take it to the house, but he high-fived his teammate De'Anthony Thomas on the way to the end zone. So disrespectful. What the devil? Another one? Hey, it's me, MJD Alien. And no disrespect, but this show is getting way too weird for your boy. Show is over. Time to space boogie, guys.